Hi, I'm Gregory Paolini, and in this episode of Table Saw Techniques, I'm going to show you how to make a crosscut sled for your saw stop. So stick around. In my opinion, a crosscut sled is one of the most useful accessories you can have for your saw stop. A crosscut sled provides a wide work surface to support your workpiece and a fence to register your workpiece on. A pair of hardwood runners mounted on the bottom of the sled help to guide it. It essentially turns your saw stop into a sliding table saw. And crosscut sleds are super versatile. Here's one that we made for cutting the sides of cabinets that are normally 24 inches wide. Here's a smaller version that we use on furniture pieces. And here's another that allows us to cut 45 degree spline curves on the edges of case pieces. Now, I'm going to run through the basics of how to make a crosscut sled for your saw stop. I need to make a sled that's wide enough to crosscut plywood panels that I'll use to make refrigerator enclosures. And the material that I'll use to make that is Baltic birch plywood. In this case, it's one half inch thick or 12 millimeters thick. And you'll want to size this so it's larger than the pieces that you intend to cross cut with. You have to allow enough room to add the front support, the rear fence, and also any rear supports. Next, you'll want to cut enough strips of material to glue up a lamination to create the rear fence and the front support. We'll also need runners that'll ride in the miter slots and guide the crosscut sled. For this, I'm using durable hard maple strips. I've cut them precisely to fit in the miter slots. With all of the components cut out, I switch gears into assembly mode. I start by gluing up the laminations, which will become the front support and the rear fence. I'm using plain old yellow glue for this. Then I use staples or brads to hold everything together while the glue dries. You could screw this together or simply clamp it together as well. Just be sure not to place any fasteners where the saw blade will pass through the fences. Let the laminations dry overnight. Then trim them flush along one edge and finish them up by ripping a parallel edge. Next, we'll connect the front support to the base. We'll just do this with screws. The alignment here is not critical. Space your fasteners about every six or eight inches. And remember to avoid areas where the saw blade will track. I'm using two and a half inch long drywall screws to secure the front support to the base. With our front support attached to our base, it's time to affix the runners to the base. Let me show you a little trick to do that. The runners are cut a little thinner than the depth of the miter slot, so they sit below the surface of the saw deck. Placing quarters underneath them raises them up, and now they sit proud of the saw's top. Fill both miter slots completely with coins to fully support the runners. Next, run a thin bead of glue on your runners. Then set the base on the runners. 
making sure you line up the base with the leading edge of the top of the saw stop. I drive a few pin nails through the base and into the runners to hold them. Then flip the entire unit over and secure the runners to the base using screws, spaced about every six inches. Now we've got the hardwood runners secured, but before we flip the piece over, let's take a few moments to put some paste wax on the bottom to help it slide a little easier, and make sure that you get some paste wax on the runners too. That'll help them to slide in the miter slots a little easier. Now we need to raise the blade and make a cut because we need to know exactly where the kerf is going to be on the base. But we don't want to cut all the way through to the end. So we'll stop just shy of here. We don't want this plywood base to be able to separate. We want it to maintain its square. Now I'll set my fence in place and I'll attach just one edge of it with a screw so that way it will pivot and I can align it just right. Once your fence is in place, temporarily secure it with a clamp and then attach it permanently underneath with more screws. Now I'll just add some blocking to the back of the fence to help reinforce the joint between it and the base and to help to keep it square. I want to make sure that I avoid the area where the blade is going to exit the crosscut sled. So I'm going to install some blocking there just as a reminder to keep my hands away. And that's it. That's how to make a crosscut sled for your saw stop. Now all that's left is to put it to use. Yeah.